cicadas chirp in the distance, their dissonant calls representative of my own thoughts. The sun's light shines through the pale leaves and needles above my eyes. They cast confined beams of light onto the dark soil. What I assume to be pollen rushes over the forest in a steady wind, creating a blanket of natural allergens. Some of the darker clouds contrast against the pale blue ocean of the sky. For the first time in months, I recognize the sun's heat on my own skin, and begin again to realize the overwhelming sounds of the silent forest. So silent, it becomes drastically apparent how full of life the trees are. What I believe to be true sign momentarily shows itself after a short focus on the sun. You cannot rush art. However, nature nurtures the artist's mind and creates an endless inlet and supply of inspiration, at least in my eyes. The distant chatter of the birds catches my ears and reminds me again of the activity of life around me. I feel connected to the forest, like it branches out from each of my respective limbs to an endless array of life. The language of the universe is gravity, but the language of Earth is life. Again, just in my opinion. Life surrounds us even in solitude. Due to the nature of life and consciousness, we are never truly alone, no matter how disconnected from fellow man we may be. The thinly lit veil of reality slowly lifts and becomes the true interdimensionality we live in. It becomes increasingly apparent that even in the forest, as I plunge my fingers into the soil that man has been here before and will be again, in a matter of time, this forest may be turned into another part of our disastrous infrastructure of modern civilization. But I prefer to live now while there's still some left. <laughs> All right.